Welcome back to Twisted Stitches. My name is Tammy. How is everyone doing today? Today is Friday, December 11th. And forgive me with the lighting. Um, maybe we can go with a little relaxed, informal, not so bright, harsh lights. Um, my overhead light that's right above me over here sometimes feels like it's way too bright and blowing it, blowing out, you know, everything. Um, and then this one here, uh, I have not changed the light bulb yet. No, no, I have not. One of the reasons I haven't done it yet was number one, I've been like extremely busy, even in today. Um, some of the things I did before filming, before coming in here to film was to dust a little bit because I don't know if all you have noticed, some of you who, you know, watch all the time, <laughs> It happens because of, you know, the fibers that are in the yarn and stuff sometimes, but my last video, which was the um, Advent unboxing I was looking at, and I could see the little dust particles going all over the place. I was like, really? Is it really that dusty in here? I mean, I dust about once every week-ish or so, um, but I don't know if it's just because I've been opening a lot of you know, the advents every day and having a lot of like yarn fibers going everywhere. Plus I had other things going on that we'll talk about later. So maybe I just had like a lot of yarn fuzz floating around, but I dusted again and I tried to clean up a little bit in here. I didn't straighten as well. I only did a little bit of straightening, which that's my next accomplishment I need to work on. But I did do a little bit of like just dusting down the room to make sure I didn't have a little, I could not believe it. I was sitting there watching the, the replay of the video and I'm watching, I could see these little dust particles floating all over or fibers floating all over. I'm like, I was like, oh my gosh, what is going on? People are gonna think that I have the dustiest house in the world, which, you know, it's not perfect, but it's definitely not that dusty. So anyway, I was at Walmart yesterday now y'all knew I had gotten those Halloween shirts and I still wear them. I will keep on wearing them. You might eventually see me wearing them again because I won't put them away till next Halloween. I'll just continue to wear them. Comfortable t-shirt, why not? So this one here I saw hanging in the, uh, hanging in the racks and I was like, I really, really want it. And I'll wear it after Christmas, it's okay. I wish I had said one other thing, I'll show you. So it says, my favorite color is Christmas lights, but it should say and yarn because you know, hey, why not, right? Anyway, I thought this shirt was really cute. One of those just like cute little shirts. Had to have it, I bought it, it's five bucks. Five bucks at Walmart, it works. Been kind of a weird, hectic week, not too bad. We had an unexpected appointment and it was a sleep study. So ended up spending a night at one of those sleep study places and I got home and I was exhausted and I wanted to go back to sleep, but I didn't. But then I was kind of moving, you know, moving forward in reverse, definitely all day. I feel like I was doing that today too. I felt like every time I thought I was accomplishing something, I just shh, backwards. I was like, am I not done yet? Really? Really? Am I not ready yet? No, I wasn't. It was just one of those days. Yesterday was dog bath day. Now... My one dog, Peaches, who is a multi-poo, part poodle, part uh, Maltese, what the heck is he? She's mostly poodle, you know, and she has that hair that curls up real tight and you can't even brush through it. If it gets too long, you really can't brush through it at all. <clears throat> and she had gotten really long. I usually take her and have her go to the groomers about every five, maybe if I can push a little bit, six weeks, because she's doesn't want to like lay for me and and let me do her plus I can never get her looking really good I can't shave her and make her look good and she just she just doesn't sit still now my other dog Gizmo the Lhasa Apsa she lets me do anything to her she's like as long as mommy is paying attention to me I will let her do it so I tell her to lay down and let me get, you know, clip her nails. She just lays there. She lets me clip her nails. She lets me clean out her paw pads. She doesn't like baths, but she lets me do it. She just punishes me later on, like leaves me a little spot of tinkles somewhere in the house to tell me that she was really upset that I gave her a bath. Oh, well, anyway, so yesterday 
peaches went to the groomers and as soon as peaches went to the groomers i um shaved gizmo a little bit gizmo is the lhasa peaches is the poodle i shaved gizmo a little bit and i don't shave her down in the winter i just kind of get she would get she gets like really long like uh kind of like a rough kind of coat she has a lot of like an undercoat and so you brush her and brush her and brush her and it looks like you have five mini balls of puppies in your hand every time you brush her type thing so what i like to do is in the winter time i like her to be still long to stay warmer but i like to just trim her up a little bit just so she looks just like a fluffy rounded ball so i just put the clippers on like a real high setting and just get rid of some of it and kind of helps de shed her a little bit and she looks kind of i mean like i don't do perfect around her face but she looks kind of cute so yesterday was that's that's like half my day right there it, it really is so as much as i wanted to get done i didn't get enough done to be more prepared for today does that make sense like all my little research well you know with the advents that i'm doing too i'm researching the painters and the paintings and everything about that so and every time i look up a painting or look up a new artist i just go down these rabbit holes and i start reading about them and i start learning more about everything that they were about and what they did in their lives and where they lived and who they were married to and who their kids were and i start clicking on pictures of this person and who is this person and who were you know who was this person who was she with you know blah 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 what i you know and you just start looking for things i don't know i'm that kind of person i like doing like research and stuff like that so I had a couple of the artists that I was looking up that were new for the um, advent. I was looking up their information and getting all the information down. And I just, it was like 40 minutes later per artist that I was looking up. And even the artists that I had already looked up and I was just getting some information on the paintings themselves. I was like 20 minutes. I, I mean, I just felt like, like I said, I kept feeling like I was going forward in reverse. I would just would be like, oh, look, I've got another. I kind of get the facts and get them all ready. So when it's time to open up my advent and film it, I'm ready with my information. I'm ready with my picture. I'm ready with my information. I don't want to be, you know, looking like I totally don't know what I'm talking about. You know, if I look half of like I don't know what I'm talking about. So at least this way I don't look 100% like I don't, don't know what I'm talking about. So let me bring in my yesterday's time wasters for me so you can see them because they look so cute and my one she'll want to show herself off anyway because she's so precious and cute and she smells so good and she loves the attention after she doesn't like the baths but she loves the attention afterwards so let me go get them where's my babies really there's my girl peachy peach come here come here come here peachy come on gizzy come on Come on, come on, come on. Come here, silly. Come here, come see mama. I know, I'll get you Gizzy. Hold on, let me show Peaches first. Peaches, oh, we gotta put her in a sweater. Hi, Peachy, you gonna say hi? You say hi? Say hi. <laughs> She's our nervous Nelly. <laughs> she has to be totally trimmed up like, cause like I said, she just gets all tangled up and her hair curls. And she doesn't just have regular poodle hair. She has Maltese in her too. So it's like soft, fluffy. So it turns into like a big ball of cotton knots in her and you can't brush it. If I feel like I'm hurting her so bad when I try to brush her hair when it's a little bit long. So when she looks like this and she acts all kind of like sad, we have to keep her in this cause she's cold by the way. Um, she gets cold in the summertime unless she's outside. So, okay it's okay so when she's like this she looks all sad and stuff and we call her doby you know like from harry potter and then she comes up and she tries to beg you with both her paws and goes like this and so we go what doby wants a tree doby want tree do we do we call you that say hi see she's just shaking okay you want to go down let me see sissy let me see sissy come here this is the one who loves the attention. You love the attention, don't you? So this is Gizmo. Gizmo came on my channel last year. 
And last year, it was one of the times I hadn't given her her bath or given her a little bit of a shave and she had her longer coat. But as you see, I trim her up to where she just has this little fluffy coat and it's so soft and it's so fluffy. Say hi, Gizmo. Gizmo, you say hi. Gizzy, <gasps> say hi, take picture, smile. You take picture? You take picture? No? Okay. Anyway, this is my baby. She just sits in my arms. She would sit here the whole entire podcast like this, as long as I was holding her, and she'd be so well behaved. The other one wouldn't sit here like this. She gets too antsy about it, so. But you're under my feet now, so she's under my feet, so. But this is what took me so long because I am not professional at all, and she she's so patient with me. She just lays there, as you see. She just lets me do whatever I want to do with her, as long as she's getting hugs and loves and she's in my arms or right next to me. She's a happy dog. Right, baby? Are you happy? All right. You guys going to go? Say bye. Say bye-bye. You say bye-bye? Yeah? You say bye-bye? I love you. I love you. You'd be a good girl. All right. You're so pretty. You're so pretty too, Doby dog. Yes. Come on. Come on. I don't think I've had him on here in the last... I don't know. I don't know how long it's been. So sometimes um, the door, I can try to keep the door open and sometimes he'll come in and just sit under my feet, but um, I'm just leaving it closed because they were barking before and I don't know what they were barking at. So sorry, I got dog fuzz in my mouth now. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so let's, I, I know I wasted too much time, right? Okay. So I know you're all here for what have I been doing this week? Well, guess what? I have been doing a lot of things. I don't have anything finished. Oh, heck no, I have nothing finished. <laughs> but I got like this. Well, no, I do have a finished object. I have two small little finished objects. So yes, I do have finished objects. So I can call it finished object Friday. Woohoo! I have, how many whips am I working on? I don't even know. I started like I don't know. I just started picking things up and wanting to do them. So let me start with, you know what we're going to do is we'll start with what I'm working on. Okay. So I know last podcast, last Friday, I was talking about the challenge from Natalie, Natalie's closet called closet UFO, closet UFOs. Yeah. Closet UFO challenge. Sorry. Just lost my train of thought. So what I showed you was a so last week I was showing you the blanket that I was working on last year made out of the Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick. This is like a, this is a bulky six weight yarn. And I told you that I didn't want to do the blanket I was working on. And last week I didn't even remember what stitch I was using. And then as I was frogging it back, I realized what stitch I was working with. I was using the lemon peel stitch which is basically um, as simple as, it's kind of, I think it's kind of like the seed stitch. It's single crochet, double crochet, single, double, single, double. And then you turn around and you work singles on top of your doubles and doubles on top of your singles, blah, blah, blah. So really, and I was also doing it with the recommended hook size, which I believe was a eight millimeter, an eight millimeter, I think it was. So anyway, if you remember, I had about, what, maybe that much of the blanket done, maybe six inches of the blanket done, and I had, I was like, oh, when I frog this back, I think I have maybe two, maybe three of the skeins of yarn in there. You want to know how many I had in there? I had one, two, three, it's going to fall four, five, and I already have one in this blanket. So I had six hanks of this yarn already into this blanket, or the blanket that I was doing last year. I didn't realize I had that much into it already and only had about six inches done. And now that I think about it, with only 15 hanks of yarn or balls of yarn, whatever you want to call it, I don't think I was ever going to finish. I don't think I would have had enough. I really don't. So I'm kind of glad this was um, 
like I said, I had stuck it away and I wasn't going to do it and I didn't know when I was going to pick it up again and until I got the challenge from Natalie. And one of the things that had happened is during the course of towards the end of March or something, Lime Brand had a blog and the girl who was doing, who wrote the blog was doing something about blankets for her bridesmaids that she was getting married in September or something like that. And she wanted to have a blanket for each of her bridesmaids, but she wanted quick, easy, you know, stuff to get it done quickly. So one of the patterns was using, it's base, it's basically the wavy shell stitch pattern. And it uses the Lion Brand Thick and Quick, which I have, and it used a 19 millimeter hook, a, a number 35, 19 millimeter hook. Well, I don't have that size. So I went into, I'm not, I wasn't going to buy it. I mean, you know, like, I don't think I would ever use it again. Maybe, I mean, like literally these ones that I'm going to show you, this is the first time I've break, I've broken these out. I've had these in my collection of crochet hooks for at least five years, at least. And this is the first time I've ever broken these out and used these. So the first one that I started with, because this was my biggest hook that I had, it was a 16 millimeter Susan Bates Q hook. So I started with this and I was not liking working with this. Um, I used to work with Susan Bates hooks and I used to like them at the time. And then I did go to the Clover Amour, or, or I think they're called Clover Amour hooks. And since I've been on those, I really don't like any other kind of hook. So I was really struggling with this hook. It just, it just wasn't smooth. It kept kind of like thunking into the work. I mean, you know, thunking as you were pulling your loops through, you know, your work and everything. So I was like, well, the only other size I have is the Clover. It's, I think it's their biggest size that they make. If I'm wrong, let me know if they do have a bigger size, but it's called the P slash Q and it's 15 millimeters. So I had this when I purchased my Clover Amour hooks they had these on sale and it was one of those situations where I went to like Joann's every single day with a coupon to get like half price on each one of these hooks so I could have my uh, the entire collection that I could find at Joann's. I started with the collection of, let me show you real quick, here. I started with this collection here which at the time was like $70. I know I could have, I know later on I found out about getting them through Amazon, but these were $70, but I had a 60% off coupon when I bought these. So I think I got these for say 40 bucks. So that really wasn't that bad, not that bad at all. So I'm not gonna complain about that. So then, and then these kind of hooks, the bigger hooks, which I have like uh, the K, L, M, N, and then I guess this one's next, whatever it is, you know. Um, each one of these were $7 to $8, and I went every day and used like a 40 or 50% off coupon, so I got each one of these for, say, four bucks a piece. So I was, I was okay with that. So anyway, said all that to say this. So as I was working on it, and I did the first row, I did the chain and the first row with this Susan Bates um, 16 millimeter. I was just not happy working with it. And I was like, I don't want to do this entire blanket with that hook. So I was like, how big of a difference is one millimeter going to make? So I'm making sure I try to keep my stitches nice and loose and I'm keeping my tension nice and loose to make sure. So it's working up real well. And I don't think you can tell that much of a difference. If you can, it's not going to be enough to worry about. This blanket is for me. Nobody else. This is for me to stay warm with. And in the pattern, being in the pattern, it was using a 19 millimeter hook, using this yarn, and it said to chain 36, and it said the finished uh, width would be 36 inches. Well, first of all, even if I was using a 19 millimeter hook and I was going to get gauge, 
I wanted mine to be wider than 36 inches because, I mean, let's be real, I'm wider than 36 inches. I want a blanket to lay on me and to cover me and my arms. I want it to drape over me. I don't want it to just like, I, I didn't want a lap gun. I wanted something that I actually could kind of curl up in when I'm cold, you know? So I went and I did the math and I figured out the stitch count, which wasn't that hard, but I still don't like doing it, but I did it. I figured out the stitch count and I chained up the stitches and instead of chaining up 36, I chained up 48 stitches to make this. And what I'm thinking, I haven't measured it, but what I'm thinking is I'm getting probably close to four feet long, even using the smaller hook not using a 19 millimeter, but using the um, 15 millimeter, it still is probably gonna be absolutely fine. And of course, as the weight goes into it, it'll definitely grow a little bit more. I think there's also a border for the, um, in the pattern. So the border will add some, and if I don't like it, and if I think it needs to be wider, I'll just add a little bit more border. That'll work. Or I'll make up a border, whatever, I'll do something. Maybe I'll make, uh, more rounds of like single crochet around it a few times and then add a shell border because I think the border is a shell border. Anyway, this is my closet UFO challenge working on. This is my second hank or second ball of the yarn and I've already gotten quite a bit done. So I believe that my 15 balls of yarn is gonna make a really nice size blanket. It, the pattern kind of gets lost with the these little short spurts of purple that are in this particular color. But like I said, it's for me. It's not for anybody else. It will be absolutely fine. And this was the yarn that I got at Ollie's on sale. Um, this was one of those discontinued and Ollie's picked it up and I got them for like two bucks a piece. So... I'm not going to complain. It'll be just fine. Um, far away, it's probably just going to look like a big glob of gray and purple. And then up close, of course, you can probably see the patterning a little bit. The uh, wavy shell stitching pattern. I like it. I think it's coming up nicely. It's going to be fine and it's going to be actually finished. Not yet. I don't know when. I'll see how everything goes. But I've had like one of these weird... I don't know, wanting to start new projects and oh, what can I do next? What can I do next? What can I do next? And I, I don't know why I'm doing it, but I am. Oh, well, I know why I'm doing one of them. We're just going to touch on this really quick because I'm not going to show you much of this after this because I'm not going to show it until after it's completed this time. But Tom asked me to make one of his friends a scarf. Yes. And of course, because it's one of his friends that's in this motorcycle group that they're in, these men's motorcycle club, it has to be black with a little bit of gold. So I told him, I said, well, I'm not doing no thin, thin yarn scarf. I don't know if the person is going to really appreciate a handmade gift. He's a little bit younger, so... He might look at it like, eh, whatever, you know, some people who are like that and that's fine. That's fine. So I was not, I didn't want anything that was going to take a lot of time. I wanted to use a larger hook and I wanted thicker yarn. So he said, he goes, well, where are you going to buy the yarn? I said, go to Walmart, just pick up the yarn there. And I made him buy it. <laughs> I said, this is not coming out of my pocket. This isn't out of my yarn stash because I didn't want this. So we picked up, um, this hometown by Lion Brand that they had at Walmart. It's a six weight. It only has 81 yards on it, but the 81 yards goes pretty good, I think. So we picked up this color. It's called, this one's called Madison Mustard. And you know, like I said, he wanted it the black and gold or black and yellow colors for the club colors. And then this one here is called South Dakota Black. So it's a nice black. It's real nice. So this is hometown. It's six weight. Like I said, it's 100% acrylic. It's soft. It's, it's a nice soft acrylic yarn and it's, it's fine. I made Tom's cardigan out of it last year. I showed that cardigan last year 
Um, it's bulky, but basically I'm just going because I just wanted to make it simple. I want to be able to do this in the dark. I'm just using half double crochet back and forth rows. That is all I'm doing. And then he wanted just a couple of stripes of the gold here. And then he wants me to finish the, um, all the way to the other side. And then on the other side, the same striping pattern right there. And that's all he wanted. But then he was talking about gold going all the way around it. So what I'm thinking about is taking this gold and doing a slip stitch all the way around. That'll just add a little detail and hide any, you know, like that way I don't, this yarn, I know I'm babbling, right? Yeah. This yarn is kind of slick. It almost kind of reminds me, it has the same slickness of like Karen Simply Soft. And this particular yarn, I actually will put a small knot in it to keep it when I attach the yarn because I feel like if not, it can just easily come loose. Even after you weave in the ends really well, it just seems like it can come loose really easily. So this particular yarn, I just like with the Karen Simply Soft, I like to um, put a little uh, small knot where I attach, or uh, I like to put a little small knot where I attach the new yarn. So that's that. It's in this bag because sometimes I just take it with me. I'm using a N slash P 10 millimeter hook. I think this is one size bigger than the recommended hook. Let me see real quick. Oh no, the recommended hook is a K 6.5. 6. Whoa, no, no way. Holy crud. No, no, no. So this is making it with the 10 millimeter. Now, yes, it has a little bit of spacing in it, but if I made this with the six millimeter, it would be too stiff. It's already, it's stiff now. But I, I mean, like with this, at least it's got a little bit of wiggle room. I would imagine if I made it with a 6.5 millimeter, this thing would have been like compact, tight stitches that just felt like a huge, it probably would have felt like a rug, honestly. So no, yeah, I think using the thicker yarns like this, you really need to use a very large hook, especially with crochet. Crochet just makes kind of bulky stitches anyway, so you really want to use a large hook, big, loopy type, for me anyway. That's just my preference. Some people may like it. If I was making a rug, uh, yeah, go down to 6.5, maybe even a 6 millimeter. Really do it nice and tight and make a really dense fabric for a dog bed, cat bed type thing, a basket that would make a great basket, like especially with like a mosaic pattern or um, using like maybe the moss stitch or something like that, you know, where it kind of interlocks. That would make a nice, dense, compact, beautiful looking basket or uh, rug or something like that, or a heavy throw that you maybe put on the back of your couch and use it for more like decoration or something I don't know but anyway yeah I definitely would do that but for something that you want that's more wearable or just something that you want to drape over your body definitely got to go up those hook sizes and make a nice lacy type stitch that's half double that's the smallest I would do that's the smallest stitch I would do using that thick of a yarn unless I was making you know the, the basket or something like that so anyway so then um, sometime this last week, I don't remember when, we went to one of the places that we go sometimes to eat, and it's called Coney Island. It's, it has hot dogs. It's a hot dog place. And the people there know us, and one of the things that they do for me there, this is just a little bag I'll show you. One of the things they were doing for me there, they were saving their little rings from their iced tea and lemonade jugs and stuff like that. So these rings are a little bit bigger than like an average size milk ring. Here, let me get oh, an average size milk ring. Hold on. So here is the milk ring from like my milk that I buy here, right? And so this is theirs that they use on their iced tea. They have like big gallon jugs of iced tea and lemonade in their restaurant. So there's a little bit of a difference. I'll put it inside each other. It's not a ton, but you can see the one fits inside the other. So you probably got like an extra uh, centimeter around or something like that. So anyway, last year I was looking for 
some crafts that I could do for Christmas time. And one of the things I came across was a pat, um, a tutorial. The channel was called Crouton Crafts or Crouton Crafts or something like that. I'll list the, the, um, I'll put the link to this particular pattern or this particular tutorial in my description box. Um, and this thing here, I was making these last year and you use those like milk rings or something like that to make them to go around and around. So I decided to start making them again. Um, I haven't finished each one. I just started making. So I grabbed my Christmas yarn from last year that I had stuck in a bin and haven't done anything with since last year. This is Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn. These colors here I liked because they're kind of like that antique Christmas colors. It's more of a cream, the green and like a cranberry. So um, his, his tutorial, he ends, he just does one round like this and then he puts this little um, V stitch on top for like the decoration. So I am the one who puts the extra round of the um, double crochets. I like it better. I like it this little bit bigger. I don't have an old one to show you because people took them on me. And actually the last old one that I have is hanging at um, Coney Island hot dog place. And then when I went there, when we went there this last week, he said to me, oh, I had a couple people asking about them. Do you have any more? Cause they want to buy some. So I'm like, well, better get started on making some of these. So, and I have to go back this week coming up and bring them with me. So I grabbed and started making a few of them. Now I have to sew in the ends and on his, he uses like a French knot to add like little, they look like little ornaments. So I still got to put a couple of little French knots and like like maybe I'll put a couple of red French knots in this green section and a couple of green French knots in the red section. But like I said, his his tutorial, he just has the one round and like if he'll do it in red and then have green knots in it or vice versa or whatever. So, but like I said, I like them a little bit bigger. And then I did this one and this one is my Hanukkah wreath, I guess you could call it. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this from this point. Sorry about the... Sorry about the stuff hanging out. So anyway, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this one yet, but I don't know. I liked the blue and white, so I thought it kind of reminds me of Hanukkah and Hanukkah colors. I don't know. Can you put a wreath up for Hanukkah? I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, so I made three of these. I still have to finish them up. But then I figured, okay, so when I wasn't working on the scarf or the blanket, I would do up more of those. But then, then... I saw um, Pamela from Pamela's Adoring Crochet. She had done like um, like a finished object type thing and she was showing some things that she had finished. And one of the things that she showed struck me like, bam, you gotta do this like right now. I mean, my body said, you are getting up and you are doing this immediately. So she was doing I don't know what they're called. I think they're just called the Lucky Penny or Lucky Penny Holder or something like that. So the tutorial is from Jada in Stitches and I will leave that link to her, her tutorial in my description box. This one here is the final product of Jada's tutorial. This is exactly how it would turn out if you do it according to the way Jada was doing it. But then when I was watching Pamela, Pamela said that she thought it like it was a little too big. Like she was worried that the penny could come out of there. I don't think so unless her stitching was a little looser. I think that if you did your stitches pretty snug like I did, I don't think this isn't gonna come out. This is This penny is not gonna come out of here at all. I don't think so at all. So there you go there. So she said that she did hers and another person, and I don't remember who it was, I'm sorry, uh, said instead of like for this here, you do triple crochets right here. These are two triple crochets put together, blah, blah, blah. And then around the edging for this like little, kind of like a, 
shell stitch thing. These are double crochets. So she said she did, she just sized down. So she did double crochet where the triple crochets were and then single crochets where the double crochets were. So I figured, oh, let me give that a try and see how it works up. So it came out cute. I don't think it's whatever, but I can't really see the, I'm trying to keep it from blowing out. I can't see the penny as much. And so here where there was triples on the other one, I did doubles and then around the edging here, I did singles. It was tight to get the penny in there and then to finish like putting it together the way it goes in the tutorial. But I don't know. I don't know if I like this one as much. I really like the way this one came out though. I really think that one's cute. So I am actually going to make some more of these. And I think they look like, I think they would make really kind of cute, maybe Christmas ornaments too. I mean, like, you know, for maybe the tippy top of the tree. But I also think they would make, and I think Pamela said something about she made keychains out of them. I think they would make cute keychains or like cute zipper pulls or whatever. This is something to do with getting married. It's something that um, if you watch Jada's tutorial, she explains the whole, she does hers with white instead, but she explains the whole process and what it's about and everything. I really, I kind of skipped through that. Sorry, didn't mean to, but I just wanted to get to how to make them. Now, what had happened was, so those are my finished objects. <laughs> so what had happened was, is I was like, yes, I am going to make them. Yes, because if y'all remember my Hobby Lobby haul, I picked up these which is this is number 10 thread and that's what you needed. And this is beautiful mercerized Egyptian cotton. It feels wonderful. And I was like, well, I don't know what I'm going to do with these. Maybe I'll start making some jewelry or something, maybe whatever. So I was, and but I, I knew I wasn't going to make like, I seen some people make shirts and stuff out of this. No, I am not going to do that way too much. Way, no, no. So that's, that's just a, no, no. Oh, no. <laughs> anyway, so I was like, perfect. I've got the thread. I've got pennies. I've got a jar full of pennies. Let's go. Let's make this. Let's do this. I think they're adorable. I want to like give them out to everybody, but I really wished I had seen this tutorial like back in September. The tutorial is two years old. So it was just the matter of I didn't see it until too late. So if I had seen it like in September, I could have whipped up a bunch of them or yeah, September. Yeah, I could have whipped up a bunch of them and I could have like put them in everybody's Christmas cards. I thought that would be really cute. So you're probably not going to get a lucky penny from me in your Christmas card. Maybe next year. Sorry, guys. But anyway, uh, I am going to make a couple of those. I think they're cute. I want to make a couple for like my granddaughters and stuff like that. Maybe they could put it on their book bags or something, you know, like as a zipper pull. I'll make them into zipper pulls and put them on their book bags. I think that'd be cute or a keychain or something. Anyway, so I went, yes, let's do this. Let's make this. Let's go. I get all my supplies. Then on the hunt for the, I need steel, these teeny tiny crochet hooks to work with this thread. Now, way back in the day, back in 1996-ish, my first set of hooks that I purchased at like Kmart was the set that included, it was like the boy set, these type things, but it had, it was like in a little case and it had like, um, say size B to size um, J or in it or something like that and then it had a set of these but it had like a whole bunch of them like 10 or something of these hooks now from 1995 ish six ish up until I don't know when I did it I must have gotten rid of these hooks because I for all that time I was like I'm never gonna work with thread no, it's too tiny. I won't like it. It's too detailed. I won't like it. I will stick with DK, maybe fingering weight, blah, 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 yada, yada. So I went to do it. Could not find one steel hook anywhere in all my hooks that I have all over this place. I did not have one. 
and I needed a 1.5 millimeter. So Tom went up to the Walmart and he grabbed me this and I, and he had said, I really just wanted him to pick up like one, 1.5 millimeter. Cause that's what the pattern needs. And that's what this, the hook recommendation for this. Yeah. The hook recommendation for this is a, a, a number seven, 1.5 millimeter, um, steel crochet hook. So I was like, I just want that. Just give me one of those. But of course at Walmart, they either sold the big kit, which I don't like boy hooks. I don't even really like these. I'll be honest with you. I'm having more problems crocheting with these just because of the way the boy hook works for me. I don't know. I haven't used boy hooks in years, years and years and years. So um, I figured, well, what I would do is, okay, give me these. I will get these. And if I like doing the project, I didn't waste a lot of money on these. And then if I really want to stick with working with thread like this, I'll start getting the clover steel hooks. So seems I do like these, I am going to purchase a clover 1.5 millimeter hook. And I'll let you know if it works a little bit easier and better for me. And I'll let you know how it works up and I'll make a, I'll let you guys know about these. So let me see, was that it? Was that all I was working on? So that is everything I've been working on. My couple little finished objects. I'll tell you what though, you may laugh and go, oh, ha, ha, ha. These are finished objects, but especially the first one that I made, the first round, oh my God, it took me like 30 minutes to do the first circle <laughs> before I had to make the second circle. And I almost wasn't going to finish it. I almost was like, nope, that first circle was hellacious. I don't know if I want to do the second circle, but I just kind of gripped my teeth and I went with it and I was like, all right, let me do it. Let me at least finish the one and then let me see how I feel about it. So when I finished the one, by the time I was getting towards the end of working with the thread on this first one, I was feeling like, okay, I got this. I, I, I was getting how to hold the tension in my hands with that little tiny thread. I mean, literally, there is such a difference here. <laughs> like literally tensioning the thread. Look at that. Can you even see that? That's how I tension the thread. That's how I tension my yarn in general. But like literally, it just felt like it was more difficult to really keep the tension on there. And I couldn't do that thing where I see some people who work with thread and they wrap it around their finger like a bunch of time and then just let out a little at a time and then wrap it up a few times and let out a little time. Maybe I'll get better at that with more practice, but no, I didn't like doing that. So you might laugh, but these two took me over an hour. So mm, <laughs> and it, they are more than you would think. And then these here, I only have a little bit more to do. These actually, because I use a four weight yarn, they only take me, I think they take me about 15, 20 minutes to just get this part done. And then, but like, <laughs> you can see the difference when I tension my yarn for yarn, it's just so much different. <laughs> oh, it's kind of funny. I don't know. But anyway, I am enjoying working with the thread and I am going to continue to I'm gonna keep on working, like making little things like these and then seeing if I get really good at working with the thread and the feel of it and everything. It really wasn't as hard as I thought it was gonna be. The first beginning part was a little wonky and I did have to play with it, but as soon as you kind of get a rhythm with it or the feel of what to do to make your stitches look presentable or not, not loopy, like that's what was happening. I was getting like a lot of, um, I was just getting like a lot of like loops that just kept forming and I just had to practice with pulling them up and like, you know, working with my hook a little bit more. Just a weird little thing. So anyway, that's that. I'll be working on those. I want to make some more of those. I'd really like to get some out to some of my friends, but I don't know how many I'm going to get done, honestly, over the course of this week. So now that that's all done, now I can get to, I have some cards from my wonderful, wonderful friends out there. And I'm going to talk about, first I'm going to open this card right here. This card is from a friend of mine and her name on YouTube is Jackie Knits. Now she doesn't have 
um, videos on her channel, but she, you know, of course she has a channel, you know, everybody who is on YouTube, everybody who comments, anybody who's watching the videos and has, is it has the ability to comment has a YouTube channel. What you decide if you decide to post videos is up to you. So, uh, Jackie's channel is called Jackie Knits and she gave me this awesomely, let me see, I don't want them blowing out. This little cute little penguin. Stop doing that. This cute little penguin wearing a Santa's hat. Isn't he adorable? He just wants to blow out though. The white wants to blow out. He is just so cute. So it just says Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Thank you so much, Jackie. I love it. And I love the little extras too. I really appreciate them. I'm enjoying that immensely. Just so you know, I want you to know which I think you know anyway. So that's one. And now I'm going to open up the other ones and then I will hang them up, okay? So this one comes from... Happy mail from Emmy. <laughs> now, Emmy, I want you to know. Now, I do slit them open with my... Let me see something. With my handy-dandy uh, mail opener right here. But, um, just so it's easy to get into, I'm not making a bunch of noise and stuff, but it was slit like this when I, when it came today, when I got it today in the mail. So I'm just letting you know, Emmy, I didn't even start out opening it. It was already open. Oh, this is so cute. Let me see what this is. Oh, it's a keychain. Looks like with a coffee, uh, with a mug and saucer full of coffee. And it says, Dash of Disdain. You guys see that? Dash of Disdain. My anything and everything you celebrate. It says, wishing you a happy, and then you can check off, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Winter Solstice, Boxing Day, Festivus, Festivus for the rest of us, <laughs> non-specific holiday or other. <laughs> so this kind of keeps it so you can check off anything. Let's do Festivus for the rest of us. How's that? And it says, may anything and everything you celebrate be happy. Best Emmy Phillips. Uh, Emmy is the one that I, she's given me a few postcards. The one was from Idaho. The other one was from Minnesota where she lives. Um, oh, look, I am official. Is this, you know, you see these cute little crochet hooks around her coffee mug? Now I had seen that she, on her Facebook... She had something called Hint of Disdain. So is this what your new logo is, Emmy? Dash of Disdain. I like it. It is cute. I love this keychain. I'm going to put this on my keys. Definitely. Thank you, Emmy. I love it. I love the card. It is going up on my wall. Yes. Hold on. I'm moving things around here. This one comes from my friend, Natalie. Natalie's closet, we're doing the closet UFO challenge. Oh, there's the front. And it says warmer than cocoa and cozy as mittens, sweet as a candy cane and bright as a new snow. Well, thank you. <laughs> Wishing a Christmas that's all kinds of merry to someone who's all kinds of lovely to know. Enjoy your holidays. And there's some personal stuff in there. Thank you, my friend. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, Emmy. Thank you, honey. I love it. I didn't know if I did that. I'm sorry. Losing my brain. Function, brain, function. So, and then I got a card from my friend, Michelle Chapin. I think that's how you say your last name. If I'm wrong, let me know, Michelle. Just leave it in the comments on how to pronounce your last name. So Michelle is in Washington. Oh, wow. Lord, that is so far away. Oh, this is so pretty. Oh, it's Thomas Kincaid. I love Thomas Kincaid's artwork. Kind of like that folksy artwork. Very pretty. I love it. May the joy of this holiday season fill your home with happiness. Thank you so much, Michelle. Thank you. I love it. 
going up on my wall. So you guys ready? Let's go get our, let's go hang up these cards. Uh, let me get my tape. I may have to hang some of them without you guys watching because I might have to get up on the ladder. Which is not easy. Which is not easy for this flat back syndrome woman here. I'll tell you that right now. That's why, did I tell you that's why the light wasn't on? So that's why the light hasn't been changed yet because not only did I have a lot of stuff to do and you saw some of the stuff I did. Um, I don't know, can you see the... Can you see them, guys? Here, I'll put you up a little bit higher. How's that? There you go. It'll be better next week. I'll put the light back on, blah, blah, blah. I'll have it. Um, one of the reasons I don't have the, the light fixed yet is because with my um, scoliosis and scoliosis repair that I had back in 1982, they used Harrington rods. And one of the things that has happened to people who had that surgery back in the day, like I did, um, one of the things that happens is you get something called flat back syndrome. And because I have rods that go from bottom all the way up, my back is always straight, you know, well, like it's always, I can't hunch over. So what has happened is the hips have rotated forward and the hump that used to, you know, your lower back that goes out like this, what happens over time with this surgery, for whatever reason, it goes in this way. So instead of me going like this on the curve of my back, I'm just now kind of straight flat back. And then with my hips rotating forward, when I stand up, I lean forward, but I lean forward at the hips, not like hunched over like this. I can't like make a hump, so to speak. So um, when I stand up on something to look overhead and reach up overhead, that feeling I get, I feel like I'm going to fall backwards. So that's, that's why sometimes something like this happens. Sometimes if my son isn't around or something, it takes me a little bit longer to get that fixed. So that's why that's going on. Just so you know, that's all that's about, okay? So anyway, that's everything, guys. Thank you guys so much for the wonderful card. You guys make my day every day. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for being here with me. I appreciate you all very, very much. Hey, you guys stay safe, stay healthy, and stay creative, okay? And I'll be talking to you guys really, really soon. Love you guys. Bye.